You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 89, The Dental Guys 2019 Buyer's Guide to Intraoral Scanners. That's right, you heard it correctly. We are going to give you a buyer's guide for the current market of scanners in 2019. What should you buy? Should you mill? Should you scan? Which companies are doing it right? Which companies have the newest technology, the best technology? What if you want to mill? What if you just want to scan? These are all the questions that everybody is asking right now and right off fresh off the heels of all these new scanners coming out. We're going to bring you what's the best and which ones should you avoid this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by The Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Des Moines, Iowa this fall 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com right now to sign up for the next series. And welcome to this week's episode of the Dental Guys. I'm Wes, the Dental Guy. I'm John, the Dental Guy. John. What's going on, Wes? Great, great day. Um, man, springtime, loving it. Yeah. Like this is the year of why I live in East Tennessee, because the last couple of years it's been, seems like it's been straight from winter, straight to summer. And we are having an amazing spring. I mean, we had, yeah, we had some pretty rainy uh, months during the months of uh, winter, but it's been just crisp mornings. And a little warm in the afternoon, getting out, exercising, doing stuff around the yard, playing with the bees, um, getting excited, you know? Uh, yeah, it's a good <laughs> it's a good time of year, man. I feel like the the whole seasonal affective disorder is real, man. Like oh. when you don't see the sun for like four weeks. People basically, are accepting treatment. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, it's like I mean, you start no to feel what, like when the sun comes yes. out, you're like, my life is back. <laughs> Everything's going to be OK. You know, it really changes your whole mindset. Ortho, so. yes. I'll do ortho. Invisalign, right. yes. Ex- Extra exactly. crowns, veneers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just keeps rolling I'm just, in. I'm just it's like, amazing. I'm just Dylan. I'm, I'm Dylan dentistry, man. I'm Dylan dentistry. I know, man. I just got long. veneers. I'm throwing them from across the room and there's landing perfectly <laughs> seated in people's mouths. Yeah, root canal, no beautiful. problem. Let's fix it. Save it. Yeah, we, just we get don't take it done. teeth out. We save them. Get it done. When we do, we put yeah, implants and, in. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, I think in the world of like dental implant social media, mm. um, they still haven't gotten out of the uh, the like angry stage, man. There's um, some. It's interesting, right? I mean, just the last few weeks as we've been like talking on the show, yeah, you've seen our name come up on the socials. Yeah. Like the I dental mean, guys came out hard against right. LPRF. <laughs> like we're against it. Right. We're against it. Uh, it was interesting, you know, because we, we, we had like, we don't typically have to go on and sort of defend ourselves a little bit, but we kind of did on this because I sent you a you word. Know, people... I sent you a word over the weekend <laughs> while you're enjoying you yourself. Did, you did. It I sent showed you... up in my, my hangout. You know why feed. I sent it to you? Yeah, As I'm sitting yeah, back it, drinking my coffee on Saturday morning, I'm thinking about these things. I'm thinking yeah, about these things, John. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. Are we evidence-based or are we anecdotal? Mm. Are we practicing anecdotal dentistry? Yeah. What does anecdotal Ex- mean? Man, I know. Tell us what it means, John. You know, because... Well, with, you know, it's like... You know, I mean, I'm going to tell you a little anecdote, right? I mean, it's a story. <laughs> It's a story. It's a story. It's a story I told you, and that's all it is, right? So anecdotal reports is what we keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing about LPRF. Based on hearsay, is that what you're saying? Hearsay? Let me show you a case. Let me show you a case is what they say. The evidence is merely anecdotal right now. 
When well, it, well here's the thing yeah. I here's the thing I do want to bring up, okay? Because <laughs> Because what I what I hear so what we said if you didn't listen to the show you should go back and listen to the AO recap but and we posted a little short video to kind of yeah, follow up go a back and summary, check it out. but what we pretty much said here is we think LPRF could be the coolest thing ever first of all mm. we think that LPRF could be the coolest thing ever it might be it might change everything but uh, it might not we thought the same thing about PRP we thought the same thing about BMP all these funny like Heck, we thought acronyms. the same thing about the first glass on them or cements. Right, right. We saw, thought the same thing about HA. Mm. We thought the same thing about Emdogain. We thought the same thing about beta TCP when it came out as an alternative for bone grafting. All these things, right? Mm -hmm. All these things. Gem 21. I mean, you go, go down the list, right? And over the years... There have been these things that come and go, and we're not saying that 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 this isn't going to be the best thing. It might be the best thing ever, but the thing I found was interesting. So, so you know, you can argue about whether or not it works in your hands. That's really that's cool. Like if it works in your hands, man, we're saying that's awesome. Like way to go. But the question is, we try to we try to answer on this show is is what we're doing actually based on literature, or is it just based on anecdotal reporting? And the thing I found was really interesting is the response that that people... I brought up the, the fact that there's a big conflict of interest because yeah. a lot of people that are really pushing PRF hard are the people teaching the courses about how to do it. And that does create a big conflict. And and the response that we got from a couple people, well, these people have textbooks. Yeah, They have textbooks they published. And I, I just found this very interesting because if you look at the textbook authors, they are... Most of them, some of them are just clinicians, but some of them are actually doing some research. And the same main guy that put out the most popular textbook on LPRF techniques was the same one that published a systematic review specifically saying that he doesn't really know if it has a benefit for bone healing and bone grafting. So just that because you have a textbook doesn't mean that you actually have science. You know, sometimes things are moving so fast that you go, okay, I've got this technique. I mean, there are PRP textbooks back from 2004. You know, there was PRP textbook that, and, and, and these guys were like, oh man, this is the best thing. You know, like 2004, 2006, 2008, it was building, it was building. And then the research basically caught up and they were like, oh, it doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. So we all put our centrifuges away in the closet and we went back to practicing evidence-based dentistry and we've gotten a lot better at that but now it's, it seems like it's back again so we're just saying we're just saying caution like don't don't just don't wa look at a case report or at what someone else is doing and even if they have a textbook man find out if the textbook is just a bunch of case reports well i think the thing we want to say is that when do you change what you're doing Right, because mm -hmm. that's what everybody's looking for, John, is they want to know right. when should they change or should I add this to what I'm doing? Exactly. Because I think that's the thing that people try to sell is like, look at what I've done. You should do it too. Because when you post something on the socials, mm -hmm. basically you're saying, look at what I've done and maybe you should consider it too, right? But there's a lot of story right. behind that. There's a lot of story behind that. There's a lot of like anecdotal story from most of these people and right. that, and that's okay. That's okay. Cause if it is working for what you see is working for your patients, that's great. Right. And we're not saying it's not working for you. We're just saying right. that. And it may be the best thing ever. It may be. And I hope it is like, I really hope it yeah. is. I just want us to be careful when we do see something like this, that we all just don't jump on so fast. Right. Right. I mean, I, I, I get a little concerned about that. Also think about, too, that the people that I practice with that place thousands, thousands of dental implants. We just talked about this the other day, how how specialists are not the ones that are right. jumping on this, which is interesting. And I, and I, and I talked to periodontist that yeah. are the ultimate in soft tissue yeah. management. And I'm like, what do you guys think? Right. And... They're like, initial thoughts would be this, that, yeah, you might see a little bit better healing, but 
it doesn't change anything that I'm really have been doing for the past five to 10 years. Right. So I, I, and that's the thing is we, I, we we were talking about this the other day on the phone that it's interesting how this is a general dentist thing. It's not a specialist thing. Like, and, and I, and I know it's going to make some people mad, but I mean, what is this? I mentioned this the other day. It's like GPs have this, we have this like chip on our shoulder. Like, we're going, that, to, we're going to talk about this because, you know, you and I, we're going to do another show on how to work with a specialist as a yeah. GP and not to defriend them, but to how to befriend them and actually right. get it to work in your favor. And so, right. hey, stay tuned for that episode. We haven't talked about how to work with specialists in season one. And right. It's a good thing to bring back up. But it, I just think it's important that we realize, you know, guys, you know, get get over it man We're, you know it, like like if the specialists aren't doing it it doesn't mean that they're not good yeah it means that they might have there might be something to it guys there might be something to to waiting and making sure that it's proven before you implement it in your practice as a gp you have a lot more fl- interesting you know you might think as a gp i'm super progressive and that's like oh i'm just on to the new stuff well you know you might also be a little too early. It's a reason why specialists, you know, they don't have anybody they can refer to. When you're a GP and your case crashes and burns because mm-hmm. the technology that you use that you thought was the best went badly, you're going to refer it to a specialist who's not going to do crazy stuff. Yeah, They're going to do things that, that are that's predictable. Not exactly. Because the reality is if you talk to specialists, I know of, <laughs> I know of a guy <laughs> Who's a specialist that practices down the road from one of these people that's big on the socials, and he's getting some stuff, man. The yeah, failures. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> Just be careful. <laughs> I mean, he's getting the failures be careful. of this person that's posting all this stuff and has a huge advertising presence on the internet for like. You know, I, I'm I, not even. I'm honestly, trying to be careful because I don't want to call the name, but I just want to say. Yeah. Like the reality is the reason the specialist and what is a specialist the specialist isn't doing a cr- bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. They're just doing predictable stuff. So just remember, you know, there's some caution just because you can doesn't mean you should, you know, make sure that you're on the right side of history, as they say. So now as we're, as we're on the controversial oh, side man. of things, we're going to get into the show in just a minute. Yeah. Because this show, Wes, this has been a lot of preparation work. Yeah. This has been a lot of time. And I think it's going to be one of those that goes down in history. Well, something for us. probably we'll do again sometime. So we're right. excited about it. It's, it's going to have to become a, 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 a show we do, I don't know, once a year, once every yeah, so the often. The way the technology But before goes, we get I to that, this case. yeah, absolutely. But before we get to that, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. And then we're going to get right into one of the one of the coolest shows you're, you're going to have heard in a while. This is Justin Goodbrand. Here is today's tip. It's tax time. By now, you may have already filed your income taxes, and it's so awesome. Regardless, I want to draw your attention to the line labeled total tax on your 1040. If the total tax amount is higher than you like, now is a time for tax reduction planning for this calendar year. You can begin minimizing your taxes from this point forward. Now is a time to meet with your CFP and your CPA. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. John, we've been waiting to do this for a long time because we've put a lot of work into this show. We today are going to assess the scanners on the market. We're also, yeah. we're going to talk about everything from money, how much money these generally cost, and what, everything from can you mill, can you, I mean, what the software that comes with this stuff, this is going to be the stepping stone for you, the listener, in starting your research project when it comes to scanners. Right. Okay? This is basically a scanner buying guide. That's exactly By the dental it guys. It's the buying guide for scanners by the dental guys. And it's also kind of a state of the science yeah. or state of the, the the technology right now that we have in scanning and a little bit about what's maybe coming down the pipe in the next 
let's kind of get do a little, little history wants. of where we're at with scanning, okay? And mm-hmm. then we'll kind of come full circle of what we would do at the end of the show here, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So where we're at with scanning is right now, uh, I've been using 3M scanners uh, since they were brought onto the market early back in 2008, 2009. I had a scanner introduced to me, and I and I bought the Chairside Oral Scanner. Okay, that's the original 3M scanner, and I don't mill in my practice. Okay, and I send everything out. And then whenever that scanner went kaput in about five years, I eked it along as far as it would go, trashed it out. And I upgraded to the TrueDev. And then right soon thereafter, uh, John entered the scanners market and was able to get a good deal on a TrueDev as well. And so he's been scanning for a couple years now. And um, so we both use uh, 3M scanners. And um, I'll just say this about 3M. We're going to start right off. Okay, where is Hmm. 3M and scanners, John? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, so we, yeah, they, <laughs> we pretty much taught, we talked to them at midwinter and Hinman and <clears throat> they said that, you know, essentially they have two reps in the whole country now for their scanners. They've shut down the R and D department. Essentially from what we understand, 3M is abandoning the scanner market as of now, um, which means they're not working on developing new technology because the technology they have, they've realized cannot be made uh, powder free mm-hmm. and uh, not really adaptable to color. And they just don't feel like that's, I think, a strong growth area in their uh, company right now. So, yeah, so basically, this is probably the last generation, maybe ever, that mm-hmm. we'll see of a 3M hardware pro- product. You right. know, I mean, you see a lot of 3M soft products and materials, but so essentially, they're getting out of the market. They, they made a good scanner. It's been a great scanner, but they're, Um, There are some things it can't do. We know, right? You know, it doesn't have color capability. It does require powder. Mm -hmm. Um, It it is not necessarily designed for full arch, uh, you know, restoration type of cases. That's not the goal of the scanner. It's to be able to do more of the traditional crown and bridge posterior single units or one, two, three, maybe four units. And, and it does a great job of that. And you can do full arch stuff with it, of course. Right. And we'll get into kind of what the capabilities of the scanners are. But bottom line is, 3M seems like they're getting out of yeah, the market. Yeah, they're getting out of the market. It's kind of sad. We'll talk a little bit more about what we, maybe comparison of what, what we would, you know, how we would compare it to what's on the market right now. John, I just wanted to go back to episode 69 just for a little bit and recap what we thought was and what currently, because this is an updated list of what is predictable today a hundred percent of the time a hundred percent of the time with, with scanning. scanning okay yeah so quadrant ca- crown and bridge okay that's what yep. everybody's wanting to do is bread and butter dentistry this is 90 percent of the time if you're yep. a general dentist you are prepping and seating crowns and we we talked to ryan mizimoto the other um a couple weeks ago at the american academy of fixed prosthodontics and this is what he's using scannings for 90 percent of the time is just bread and butter you know, mm-hmm. crown and bridge. And then single posterior implant crowns. Totally. Like this scanners can do this. And any one mm-hmm. of these scanners can do this currently. Um, non-critical full arch appliances. So that's like surgical guides, John. That's TMD splinting. That's um, like a an airway splint, uh, mandibular advancement devices. Those are Those are things that we can use scanners for right now. So, John, why don't you go into the, just the next one there on the list? Do you have that up there in front of you? Mm-hmm. The next one is what? Well, the next <laughs> one for some systems right. we'll get into is, that in is Invisalign. Minute. Yep. And, yeah, we'll talk about which systems are, are really made for that or have that capability. Uh, the, the idea originally when these scanners were coming on the market is, hey, we can use them to scan for Invisalign. As we'll talk about later, not all of them can do that. But... Some type of clear aligner therapy, let's just put it that way. Right. Um, scanning is very good uh, and predictable for that. Um, also, things like documentation of the current uh, condition of the patient's teeth. You know, that any scanner can do that and show changes over time. Um, another good use is documentation of uh, uh, full arch implant prosthetics for duplication by the lab, uh, be, being able to merge data. 
from uh, adjusted provisionals that you might make before you go to your final full arch prosthetic. Any scanner can do that very predictably. And one of my favorite things that's very predictable is to do restorative dentistry more easily while patients are in orthodontics without having to take them out of braces to get impressions. So you can scan and do really predictable <clears throat> uh, things such as, you know, lingual uh, buildups and size alleged buildups and even do some, you know, wax ups and things even while patients are still in orthodontic treatment very, very predictably. So that, that's what we feel yeah, is the 100%. short and dirty list. Uh, there's some other things that are kind of mm -hmm. outer limits, you know, things yep. and they're still outer limits. Um, yep. There's some things we don't know about some things coming onto the market, but let's actually, I just want to kind of run through John, the uh, each scanner as far as just, um, well, you know, who they are, All right, Who are we going to be yeah. covering today? And let, yeah. Let's, let me just list all the scanning, all the scanners on the market that we feel are the major players. And then we're going to start breaking down each scanner, uh, into, uh, all of the different attributes that we want to compare. So we're going to be talking about, um, first of all, uh, three shapes trios. And we're going to talk about trios three, uh, which has been their main their mainstay for the last few years. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about Trios 4, uh, which is uh, just released and is going to be available. Uh, what we heard is it's available for shipping in June. <clears throat> uh, we're going to talk about CEREC. Of course, I have to talk about CEREC Prime Scan, which again is very new. We got a chance to play with it uh, for a while. Um, we're going to talk about CareStream's uh, product. And we're going to talk about uh, the... 3500 and a little bit about the 3700 from CareStream. Uh, Plan Mecca, uh, we're going to talk about uh, their scanner. They have a, a tough couple different scanners. The Emerald is their, their newest one. Uh, we're going to talk about iTero. And we may just give a little brief mention to Medit because uh, iMedit has been new to the scanning game and has a scanner out there that's, uh, you know, an interesting product um, that's uh, not as widely available or as widely supported. Um, so I think the way we want to kind of go through this with each one. <clears throat> and this is hard to do because some of these are made for specific workflows. You know, some of these are more designed with milling in mind, and some of these are designed more for scanning and sending. And some of them can be made to mill, but it's a little harder. So I think maybe the way we want to do this is let's talk first, Wes, about the scanners that are at least initially designed more for the scan and send to the lab yeah. workflow. Is that, that that's yeah, a good I think way that's to start? A good maybe? Way to start. And then let's go into which one of the scanners can be made to mill and how. And then we'll talk a little bit about some comparisons. So mm -hmm. I think what do you want to start with, Wes? I think Trios is probably a good Trios, one to start with. That's what with. everybody wants to hear about because <clears throat> it's the one that's kind of pushed the market to this new mm -hmm. modern scanner, let's call it. And yeah. uh, so let's talk about Trios. And really recently, uh, Trios 4 was released. And let's talk mm -hmm. about the differences, John, of what they have now, the Trios 3 basic, mm -hmm. and what that means for the dentist. So, John, you, you yeah. went over to the booth and spent a lot of time talking to them, a three shape. And we went and talked to them a little bit at the AAFP meeting um, and the Chicago Midwinter but you really dove in here recently and kind of found out some interesting things. So tell us a little bit about Trios and Three Shape. Yeah, and you know I'm going to talk about some things that if you're if you know about this, you're going to be a little bored by at the beginning. <clears throat> but bear with me. If you're new to the to this market and you're looking, we're going to try to provide this guide for people that are new. So you know, be beware that there may be some things that that, that you might have heard before. If this is something you've already looked at. Uh, Trios, when they came on the market uh, a few years back with Trios 3, when 3Shape released that product, it was it blew everyone's mind because it was it was not only color, but it was full color, uh, which meant real color, not just uh, kind of the, if you compare that to Serac, their color it was color, but it wasn't the actual shade, whereas the 3Shape product, the Trios, was giving you true shade information. So you could see real shades of gingiva, you could say, re see real shades of tooth, and actually using some interesting technology, kind of like some spectrophotometry, you can get some actual shade information for the lab, at least a base shade for your crown. So that that kind of blew everybody's mind. So that Trios, th Trios scanner, the Trios 3, um, has now been kind of broken out into two scanners. So now, um, just a, 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 in the last few months, 
they have separated those things out. So now if you go to the three shape booth and you say, I want Trios, I want Trios 3, they're gonna show you a wireless scanner that uh, has like a pen grip, wireless, it's pretty big, and they're going to give you a bunch of apps that come with it that allow you to do some things. We'll get into that. But there's also the Trios 3 Basic, which is probably sitting over there next to it, looking very similar, but it has a wire. So what's the difference between the two? Um, Trios 3 Basic costs $24,000, and the Trios 3 Regular costs around forty. dollars so the difference between them now is mainly the wire, you know, so if you go to the, the Trios 3, as it is called now, um, it's wireless, which is, which is cool. Um, they both, though, utilize the same type of scanning, the same technology, um, the same basic speed from what I could tell, and I use both of them a lot, uh, and I didn't feel like there was much difference with the Trios 3 versus the basic. Um, the, the big difference, of course, is the wireless feature. And uh, with the wireless, you get a little bit bigger unit and a little heavier unit because it has to have some battery going on in there versus the wired. Um, why the huge difference in price? Well, wireless is one, but the other is these apps. And you know, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on this because it can get into the high weeds quickly, but just know that these apps are for things like if you want to do some interesting things with orthodontics, for instance, designing, kind of getting into your own clear aligner designs. They have some apps that allow you to do some things with maybe some uh, tracking of movement. Okay, so that's another interesting thing. These are these are cool. Uh, are they're certainly not essential to day to day scanning for your for your typical case. So you should look at them. Uh, but I don't know that you're going to be swayed to that that's the difference in price. I think you're going to find the difference in price is really just the wireless feature. Um, so if you look at where we are with Trios, the big thing on the horizon is Trios 4. It just got released. We thought initially when we heard about the drop in price that they were responding to PrimeScan being released on the market. They were trying to maybe take a bite out of Prime Scans. Yeah. Uh, or maybe newness. like Medit. We we thought at one time, is this yeah. a three shape killer? Right, right. But it was kind of. But now I think yeah. what we're realizing is it was because the Trios 4 was about to be released. Right. And they knew that why would you buy a full price Trios 3 if you know that Trios 4 is going to be coming on the market? So uh, what we know about Trios 4 so far is it's going to be about 45000 so not too different in price from the Trios 3 now with all the features. It's going to be wireless. Mm -hmm. It's going to be faster, but it's basically going to be the same size and the same interface. My understanding, at least from three shape reps I spoke to, and this is all just coming from reps, so could be wrong, um, is that it's mainly a software change. There's really not a huge amount of hardware change, but there is a big change in the software, which allows it to be a little bit smoother scanning and faster scanning for sure. And from the videos we've seen from uh, IDS meeting, it looks like that is true. But yeah, the scanning I think the is thing significantly that they're faster. adding here is some value proposition to the actual unit is the carries diagnostic aid and monitoring right. tools. Right, right. Prevented, you know, basically you're going to be able to do some cool stuff and tracking yeah. the carries. But, you know, and we'll see how well that works, right? Because right. they've been we talking about that for a long not, time. That's not a validated thing that we have even seen really work great in their hands. It's new for them. So don't, don't buy right. it for that. But right. I right. think what we have to say is from what we understand and what the reps have told us is that essentially this is a, you know, a, basically essentially the same thing with better software and probably right. better some software up, and some upgraded more... innards it is probably going to be right. faster. And these other cool features like the carries detection yeah. and the spectrophotometry and the infrared, which again, may be cool, may not be cool. I don't, I'm not going to be doing, I'm not going to be buying a scanner for every hygiene operatory to do my exams. And if you so were <laughs> Trios right. basic with some tracking software added to it could do right. it and do right. it well. Maybe it could. We don't know if you can add the software to the three if it's going to be available right. or if it's only going to be to the four. Um, and another couple things about uh, Trios. 
um, just as far as how it works, because we'll talk a little bit about this with each scanner. Um, you can get it in a, a cart type of version. The cart is different. It used to be a cart that was like a up like a rectangular cart, like mm -hmm. kind of a classical looking cart. Now it's it's a much more ergonomic, uh, small, slim little tripod looking thing with Pretty a small cool. screen and it's it's very cool and a lot less. Uh, the form factor just depends on your operatory whether yeah. it fits better or not. You know, some ops it's going to be better, some ops not. Or it comes with a laptop option. You you can buy. Uh, their laptop, uh, or you can uh, buy your own laptop. They give you the specs for that. You're going to spend probably, you know, four thousand bucks on a laptop, uh, something like that, to get something top of the line. Um, and then uh, you 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 have some training from Three Shape. They come into your office, or you can have one of your local supply reps do the training. Um, they recommended you have an actual Three Shape trainer come in and do it. Uh, and then you've got a year included of uh, no fees and then after that it's $200 a month uh, or so for uh, software uh, updates as well as warranty uh, on, on the scanner. Um, as far as performance, mm. this thing is fast. Even just Trios 3, I mean, we obviously didn't test Trios 4 uh, because that was only just released. But Of all Trios the scanners 3, we tested, yeah, this is my the opinion, this it's is the, the smoothest scanner. scanning, it's the fastest scanning. Um, it's the most intuitive, uh, in terms of how it kind of, how it works. Um, uh, and, and it can do all the things you would want for, uh, being able to do your, your, all the things we say are predictable yeah. in scanning as well as probably do some of the best job from what we've seen on research. Cause this is one of those scanners that has validated clinical research showing its precision and trueness probably can do a, a little bit of the, the fringe things too, uh, pretty darn well. So I'd say it's it's a solid entry, and yeah. with Trios Four coming on, I think what uh, what's going to be interesting to see how that really compares once it once it comes on the market. Now, Wes, you spent some time uh, with. I want to talk maybe next. I, I think we should which again save the Sarek and um, well, Plan Mecca and Care milling really things even then. I think we should yeah. probably just go right over to Itero because they really don't even have a milling option either. Right. Let's talk about Itero and. And I'll t since I, I spent time with them too, I know you, you Wes spent a lot of time with CareStream and Plan Mecca. We kind of split these up. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about iTero. Um, iTero, of course, has been on the market for a while. Uh, they're not new. They do have a newer version of their scanner that came out uh, a while back. It's not brand new. They have a newer uh, cart-looking thing that they that they came out with, mm -hmm. the iTero Element Scanner. With uh, and it's it's cool looking, but it's it's pretty big. Um, we're going to talk about form factor a lot as we get into comparison. Yeah, it's of the largest it's, scanners, I think you said. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think it may be the biggest one. You know, it's it's right up there with uh, with some of the biggest ones. One of the other biggest ones being this new Cerex scanner, which we'll talk about. Um, what does Itero? Do, what it, what can it do? Pretty much all the same stuff. It's not a full color, you know, true color scanner uh, like uh, like the uh, Trio says. But the big thing that iTero has going for it is Invisalign. Um, Invisalign owns uh, iTero now, and they have for a little while. And man, they are really leveraging that because what they want you to do is if you want to do Invisalign, they have optimized the iTero scanner for use with Invisalign, both in terms of how you uh, work, how it works really well with Invisalign software uh, how you can track progress with it better than you can with any other scanner. The interface is made to just directly uh, go along with your Invisalign uh, account and profile. And they really market it that way when you go to the booth. They talk a lot about, you know, hey, are you doing Invisalign? This is a scanner you need because not all scanners are even compatible. That's one thing about Trios right now. They're in a big legal battle. Three Shape is uh, with, with, uh, Invisalign because they were compatible for a little while and then they weren't and now they're not. And now there's a huge argument with them, the same thing going on with, uh, Serona with, with Sarek. So if you want to be a hundred percent sure that you're going to be able to work with Invisalign, iTero is your scanner. I did scan with it. It's fine. It's decent. You know, as far as scan speed, it's, it's good. It's, it's right up there probably with a couple of the others. And not quite as fast as what we were seeing with Trios. Um, it does have the ability to use a laptop or a cart. Um, it, uh, uh, the training you know is going to be, I think, good because it's, they want to make sure you can do a good job with your Invisalign case. And all the Invisalign reps are trained 
uh, in how to scan and will support you uh, because they have a vested interest long term in you scanning because of the fact that they're they're making money from uh, from Invisalign scans ongoing. Um, they also uh, have a, a three year period with no fees uh, at all, uh, and of course <laughs> no fees, but they want you that you know they want you to do Invisalign, so you're kind of paying for it through your Invisalign cases that they hope that you will uh, uh, be able to do. And it's about 35,000 bucks. They quoted me 34,000. Um, so it's less expensive than the full featured Trios 3, but certainly significantly more expensive than uh, the Trios Basic. So I'd say, you know, Itero is, uh, it's, a, it's an Invisalign scanner. I mean, that's how they're marketing. Well, it, interestingly you know? enough, um, you know, Invisalign, um, is pretty much rejecting uh, scans from all the other scanners right now. If you have been grandfathered in, you're lucky. Uh, from a 3M mm-hmm. user standpoint, um, we're, they're still accepting my scans. Please don't <clears throat> stop. Um, right. And then I know that the um, Omnicam users, they're still able right now, from what we understand as of this podcast, still allowing... Omnicam users to send uh, scans to Invisalign, but uh, we did ask the Prime Scan uh, people, and right now, uh, if you bought a Prime Scan, you cannot send it to Invisalign. And, right, uh, and interestingly, Denseply is marketing right next to Prime Scan. Right, they had a huge, huge sign marketing their new clear aligner therapy there's coming a, from Serona uh, Denseply. There's so. definitely some lines being drawn in the sand when it comes to clear aligner therapy. I yeah. think that market is going to be very interesting, but that's for another show. You know, one thing right. about Itero, one thing they try to, they, how they sell it to you, and I was pulling up my rep, she wanted to sell me one and for a trade-in. They want you to trade in your scanner. They'll give you about $10,000 for a trade-in, and mm-hmm. the scanner's right around thirty-three, thirty-four thousand, 34000 and they'll throw in one year of service, and then after, um, after that first year of service included, um, it's around $360 a month um, in fees. It's pretty, it's pretty high. It's pretty high. And they also sell it with a five-year service bundle included. Um, yeah, around- that was the one that I was quoted was the was the long-term plan. Yeah, or whatever, so. exactly. So <clears throat> um, would you, you know, an Itero is basically at this point an Invisalign scanner. Yes, you can do, you can export, you know, these files out. As far as we know, uh, STL files is the, really the only file you can get out of this, which is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, you can use yeah. that in a lot of programs. There are some disadvantages just to having STL, but for the most part, STL is fine. Yep. So anyway. Uh, so let's talk about uh, CareStream. Yeah, let's move over another... into, okay, so we just talked about the two companies, both 3Shape and Itero, that don't offer any milling capabilities, meaning you'd have to go beyond their scanner and go to a third party and, right. and buy Outside milling. Outside their company. Yeah, and buy milling technology. They don't provide actual milling at these companies. Now, these companies do. So let's jump over and talk a little bit about CareStream first. CareStream, um, you know, as you know, have been around for a long time. The company itself... Um, CareStream, um, you know, they also own other things. They sell, you know, CTs. They also sell software packages. Um, and they are on their second or third iteration of a scanner. And it's the CareStream 3500 or 3600 series. They do have a new camera that was released at IDS that will be later released in the United States this coming fall. So keep that in mind. Uh, from what we understand, it's kind of the same thing is that it's going to be mainly software upgrade and some little things done to the camera to just make it a little sm- more smooth, be faster scanning. But as far as the capabilities of the scanner itself, it essentially is um, very similar in what it can do as far as those things that we listed earlier as far as 100% predictable um, all the time. The things that I would be a little concerned with the CareStream, because it seemed to me, as far as the quality of the device itself, the actual scanner, Mm -hmm. it it just didn't seem like solid. You know, it felt Mm -hmm. a little clunky. It it scanned okay. I wouldn't say it was fast. Definitely a fast scanner. Um, 
but it wasn't like super duper smooth. I would, I just didn't feel like that it was just well put together, like a well old machine. Um, if I dropped it, I think it would break, you know? And, um, so now I will say the data that we have on accuracy, trueness, precision, for CareStream uh, is is very good. Yes, um, and we're going to try to talk about that. If you want, we're not going to we're not going to reference it all in this show. But if you want the reference, we'll be happy to to give it to you. Yeah, we can put it we can put it in some show notes for you that just talks about you know accuracy, trueness, precision because they have compared. And Itero, on the other hand, that's eh, not as good. Right. So it's not bad. Right. But it, it it's not it's certainly not as as good. I think that the the top you know, echelon as far as trueness and precision accuracy that we know now. Trios is up there. Uh, really, the 3M scanner's up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the CareStream is up there. And we'll talk about Plan Mecca because the Plan Scan is also yeah, uh, one a, of the a good one, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, these are excellent. So, you felt it was not the best made. I just though. didn't feel just... like, you know, you pick something up and this is like, it didn't feel, it felt plasticky. It, it, it was fine. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want somebody to drop it, okay? Because I feel yeah. like it would just yeah. fall apart. <laughs> I mean, that's how I felt. I'm just giving my honest yeah. opinion. No, no, that's I, good. I, I that's scanned good. with it. I thought it scanned great. You know, it scanned fine. It's that pin style. It does not have any wireless. It's all wired. It's hooked up to a how, li- how big was it compared to, say, tri- let's use Trios as kind of like a comparison. Say it's a, a similar size. I mean, it's similar. Yeah, it's okay. this pin style. has that same. It's, it's a little bigger on the tip than the Trios, uh, but... Mm-hmm. L- Smaller than the Prime Scan, smaller than the Itero. Okay. Okay. So if you want to buy this thing just as a scanner alone, which mm-hmm. they're really not pushing it just as a scanner alone, they're really pushing the complete package, and that's what our okay. really this next segment's about. It's about taking it to the next level. So they're pushing just the scanner as about a thirty to thirty thousand dollars scanner. Okay. Okay. Right. Three years warranties included in that and service okay so you th- yep. three years there's nothing per month you're going to pay it's all inclusive for three years now this coming fall they he said you know that that scanner the 3700 that's coming out it's gonna be about thirty six thousand, so about six thousand more so let's talk about their company and how they're setting this up they are working with if you want to go beyond just scanning they're working with a couple of different service providers. One is Benco, and there mm-hmm. was another lab that they were working with out in the West Coast. I think it's EP or something like that. But basically, Benco is going to be, and this other um, provider is going to be kind of the go-to for training and service. They're not really working with like Shine or um, Patterson. They've kind of made some deals here, and they're also working with ExoCAD. Um, so essentially, when you buy the scanner and their mill, mm-hmm. you are getting ExoCAD um, with dealer-specific modules. So you'll get basic ExoCAD, but if you want to do more, you're going to actually have to um, provide um you know, more money to be able to get these other modules. Okay. So interesting okay. thing here. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about milling. Okay. They have taken, taken somebody's mill. Okay. We're not going into specifics, but it's an industry leader. It's a, it's a mill that they've went out and they basically put their label and brand on it. Okay. And I kind of felt like that if you are wanting to kind of wade in deep, and dive mm-hmm. into like the most training and you really want to like try to figure it out for yourself and get the cheapest route in these guys might be your guys you know because mm. Benco had it all set up in their field they had printers they had scanners they had you know they had they had different mills so you could go in there and work all kinds of deals and get you a a mill, you could get an oven, and you know, you're mm-hmm. looking at probably spending about $120,000 by the time it's all said and done. And you're going to have yeah. to go learn ExoCAD. Now, here's the training where it's interesting. Like, they don't really have any like training facility. You're going to have to, like, mm-hmm. they were talking, we're trying to, he said, we're trying to work with people like Blue Sky Bio to do some of our training on ExoCAD. 
they're developing partnerships. I didn't feel like it was like this nice package that you would show up and be a part of a community. It's mm-hmm. basically if you want to dive in and kind of save some cash and yeah. figure this out for yourself, this might be the route for you. I didn't yeah. feel I didn't feel great about it. I didn't feel great. Yeah, and I mean I like I mean obviously we know Exocad is an industry leader in what they do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, and if you are working in a in a laboratory that's doing a lot of digital stuff, you know, you're working in Exocad every day. Um, and so you understand how it works and you know what you need to be able to do. If you are, uh, you know, a dentist that is not used to that, um, it's a, it's, it's not an easy, the learning curve is steep, just like it is for anything. Yeah. And, you know, when we compare this in a minute to CEREC workflow, uh, which is made for essentially anybody that, that is very more, it's, it's designed to be intuitive, um, you may struggle with. One other thing too, that the, the care stream I, I saw over there at the booth has, it's kind of hidden away is they do have a black and white. They have a, it's a 3600 access is the name of the scanner. It's the same quality, but it's no, it's a non color and you can upgrade to the color. <clears throat> and I think it was some, somewhere around this in the twenties mm. is what they, is what they said. So there is a, a monochromatic, a black and white, but when you look at the cost there and you compare it to say Trios basic uh, for still getting full color, it, it doesn't, it's not really as competitive. So, but it's interesting, Wes, like you said, they, cause th- they have their own mill. Is that right? Do they, ha- that they, that so, they sell with it? I thought I saw yeah, they like do. A 30, they have a, 30, a, a mill or something. that they're packaging with this and they've yeah. branded it CareStream. It essentially is another branded mill that they've brought in. They got rid of their original gen one mill. Okay. And he said that was just for us to get into the market. That's what he said. Okay. This okay. mill, they feel like, hey, look, this is a mill we can upgrade. This is a mill that we feel like that we've that we can offer, you know, good support with. I just feel like though that these are this is not the company that I'm really feeling great about right now. I just okay. didn't get a good feeling. I didn't get I just didn't feel good about it. I mean, as far as the integration, yeah, I just and didn't just kind feel like that I was a part of something that they were going to follow me along the way. And it was going mm-hmm. to be something that was seamless integration into my practice. Now let's gotcha. contra- let's compare that with the other company plan yeah. Mecca. Okay. Plan Mecca has been around forever. Okay. You guys know them from originally radiograph, you know, uh, they mm-hmm. Panorexes and, 3D machines. They have excellent cone beam machines. They have really upped their game when it comes to scanning, milling, printing. And one of the things that they did is they invested in the E4D machine. Okay. Now, guess Mm. who else invested in the E4D machine that still owns a portion of the plan mill and the plan scan? Guess who owns this? This is Ivaclar. So mm. Ivaclar owns kind of a, big deal. a stake in this Plan Mecca thing. And whenever I stepped onto the Plan Mecca manufacturing, like they're the manufacturers like Booth, this guy came over and I, I talked to the guy for an hour. Mm-hmm. I was I felt like that they were the most comprehensive at explaining how to get into this market. Mm. One of the things that I liked about him, and he kind of, he, he said, you know, I said, well, do you think I should just buy a scanner? Because I was playing dumb the whole time just for scanning. And he was like, I don't think that yeah. you should buy a scanner just to scan. Mm. I think that if you're going to get into scanning, you need to also, the return on investment comes from the milling. He said, because his, their scanners are same price, 30 to $30,000. They got a new one coming out called plan Mecca Emerald 36,000. And he said at that price, he said, and which is what we've said, John, we've said this too. We've said, Hey, we just don't think it makes any sense just to scan for that price. And so he kind of said that I was kind of taken back. He's like, I really don't think you should. There's not a return on investment. No, no, there's not. Now, they have two mills that they invented, okay? They're behind the behind these mills. One's faster than the other. 
He even said, I don't know why you'd buy the really fast one unless you really needed the extra speed. You know, it did cut, you know, four or five minutes off the milling time. If you're in a bigger office, he said maybe. But he immediately was, he was really practical. They they could, working with Ivaclar, they really had their game together on mm-hmm. just the whole package. Their service and support, I felt like, was really comprehensive. They want to send you to Dallas for two days. So they're going to mm-hmm. send you to Dallas for two days. Then they're going to do one day in office training with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And then they have this thing called the 100-day fit plan. Okay? And basically, they follow up with you every week to see how the week's going, how's your meal doing, those type of things. And um, after five years or so, I think, you know, uh, maintenance and stuff like this for the five years, warranty and all that's like included. And I think it's like 150 a month, like on your fees. I really felt good, you know, about Plan Mecca and their plan here. They export their system and software is well refined. It's being um, developed in-house. Um, they have kind of like the whole package there. Um, if you are looking at milling, I think this is a place that you need to really look hard at. Um, I felt like their scanner was similar to the CareStream scanner, John. Mm-hmm. I felt like that it felt the same. It did feel a little cheaper than like maybe the Trios or maybe even compared to the Prime Scan. Um, it didn't feel as like solid, but that really wasn't what they were selling. They were selling the service and the support and the reliability right. of their milling machine. They were selling just kind of a complete package when it comes to, you know, cone beans. Well, let's talk about let's talk about price because the scanner, <clears throat> as you said, for the newest one's about thirty six. Mm-hmm. But if you get into the mill from from what we were looking at, you're talking about with the mill and the scanner and the uh, oven that you'd need to buy. We're looking at around let's call it a hundred thousand, ninety five mm-hmm. to hundred thousand. And if you buy the faster mill, you're looking at we said about one twenty five. Right and so, you know, you're, you you got to think about, obviously, we're not going to go into the ROI calculation on no. milling because <laughs> that's really something you need to do a lot of more, a lot more research on um, to talk about ROI. That could be a whole show mm-hmm. in and of itself to talk about what's the cost of milling a restoration plus the time plus the ch- total, total change in your daily workflow. So we're not going to go to, you're not going to go there. Not Invisalign, but, no Invisalign there. And I yeah, think it was interesting. But you need to know that, you know, you're looking at $125,000 to get into the full thing with all the newest stuff or, you know, under a hundred if yeah. you're going to use kind of the more basic mill and, and get what sounds to be a, a pretty good, you know, we, we both were pretty impressed by the way that their software looked. And that was something I was the most concerned about because I've seen, you know, we know we're going to get to Sarek last, you know, the the big, you know, giant in the room because they've, they've been doing software longer than anybody. And so when we both saw the plan scan software, uh, I think we're both pretty impressed by the fact that they seem to have gotten on it and they, they've done what looks to be a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so let's talk about the big behemoth, man. Yeah. Dense supply Serona. Dense supply Serona, Sarek prime scan. And, Mm. You know, this thing came out and we were, uh, we heard some things, first of all, that, that were disturbing. You know, we heard that if you're an Omnicam user, the last generation scanner, and you wanted Prime Scan, you were going to have to fork out $79,000 for the unit. And that, that would make me very angry if yeah. I was an Omnicam user. So the big question Wes and I had going into this was Can you upgrade? Is is it <laughs> worth yeah, is it <laughs> worth spending the money if you're an Omnicam user? And then second of all, to upgrade, right? Is it worth seventy nine thousand dollars? <throat> and then second of all, if you're coming into this question of do I want to scan and mill, is it worth the premium over say plan mecca? Uh, to go the Sarek route. Let's first start off by saying, though, you can buy this scanner. See, we were mistaken. We were told it was $79,000 for just a scanner. Yeah, if you just and, want to scan, just, right, like, with Sarek. just like just like Trios 3 Basic, let's compare it to that. 
okay? Yeah. If you want to just scan and not do any design, like you don't even have yeah, the capability to, the to design. You want right. to scan and export STLs. All right. right. It's $35,000. $35,000. So you're thinking, well, that's the price like everybody else. Exactly. Yeah, it's That's right. And that's what they said. It's basically the price of everybody else. And it's the same looking unit, whether you do the yeah. design. It's just a software difference between uh, the scanner and the scanner and plus design. So you get the same looking cart um, that costs 79000 It's just that all the features are basically not on it. So now that's let's, let's talk about the actual to... scanner since we're on this. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So John and I, this is the first time we've touched it. We've seen it from afar. We, it's the first time we've scanned with it. The first thing that, so John picks it up and he starts scanning a model with it. And I just saw his face, just kind of watched his body language. And I'm thinking, man, this is going to be like some amazing moment here. This is the leading scanner. Right. And I change my I, life, right? You it's going to change, change his life. life. Change his life. Like this is it. This is the echelon of scanners on the market. And we're thinking, right. Oh, this is it. The aha prime. We're in prime right. time, prime scan. John, I don't think you got yeah, the just, warm fuzzies. No, all I could think of is this thing is freaking huge. It's heavy. And it's heavy it is heavy and it's awkward. And it's built. how am I going to fit this in the patient's mouth? And I'm worried about dropping it and balancing I'm, it. In fact, we're looking at the rep here and we're saying, wait just a second here. The very first thing I want to say is that this is bigger than the Omnicam. Right. And he was like, yeah, and it is. It's we heavier than the Omnicam. Wand. And I'm thinking, right. gosh, okay. I so mean, it's, it's significantly he- like it's, it's like. I don't know. It's like it's like three pounds. It's, I would guess if my assistants it's, picked this up, okay, and went to the mouth. And we're, let's talk about ergonomics right now, okay? Yeah, across sure. Across sure. the board, okay. Yeah. If my assistants pick this up right now, they're gonna be like, "This this is crazy. This is too heavy." Right, because they're used to what is by far the most ergonomic design, which is the true definition. I mean, the true definition is the size of an intraoral camera. It's no four years joke. old. If you you the pick it up, is four you're like, years this old. is an intraoral camera. In fact, one of my intraoral cameras I have is bigger than my scanner. So when you're used to that, and then you get one that you pick up prime scan, you're like, we've taken a giant step backward. In fact, my assistant said that about Trios even. They're like, why is it getting bigger? Yeah, when it, I my, brought the Medit question. in the office for like a day. And they were like, yeah, it's maybe cool and fast, but this thing is huge. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is a tinker toy clunker. Now, the, now we know why it's getting bigger. For those of you out there who are like, oh, you guys just don't understand. Yes, we understand. Yeah. It's because we're getting all this extra data. We're getting color. Yeah, we get heaters. We're getting all, they got heaters right. in the lenses. We got heaters to anti-fog the, the, the lens. You know, we got... Um, we got all kinds of like software. And we're not saying it won't work. What's going on? I, 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 no, we're not saying that at all. Here's what we're saying though: we are in the age of miniaturization. I mean, freaking Apple has like two little tiny earbuds that don't even have wires connecting them, and they right. And I mean, I'm not an <clears throat> Apple fanboy, but man, that's cool. Yeah. And and here we are, and we've got a scanner that's four years old. That it's a pen style scanner. It's as small as an intro oil camera of the old days or smaller. And it's like we're going backwards. And I'm thinking like, right. you hand this, I mean, and I'm like, what? And I told John this earlier before the show. I said, you know, 3M did this when they went from the COS to the original TrueDef. And the wand mm-hmm. was actually smaller, but the lens was bigger. Yeah. Because they thought that that would help get more data into the to the system, and people complained to no end. In fact, yeah. they stopped production and redesigned the tip to what it is today, which is a, an amazing ergonomic feat. It's we know it's different technology. All these scanners are different technology than what we're now, currently using. I will say what the size did is it did allow for Sarek <clears throat> to develop a really cool. Um, rejection of artifacts yeah. feature. So the artifact rejection is cool. It's next level. You can be scanning along and you can put your finger underneath the scanner and it will actually uh, know yeah. to basically crop AI. out it's got your AI. finger. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So if a tongue shoots in there and gets in your way, you know, you can go, you don't have to go in there and delete the scan or cut it out. At least that's the advertisement. And when we did it on the model, mm -hmm. it worked pretty darn well. It was pretty amazing. Um, so I will say that obviously they've come, they've made they've made some strides in terms of t this, the technology. But I think it's amazing. I'm going to argue, Wes, that's just software. Yeah. That's well, not the we, scan. We know what most people are doing now is the software side of things. Let's, let's yeah. kind of going back here just a second to... The, the actual wand we feel like it's it is of the largest wands out there it's not maybe mm -hmm. as large as itero but it's it's up there it's heavy i think you got to be okay with that it is rock yep. solid i feel like if you did drop this thing it probably wouldn't break i wouldn't drop it to try it right. um it's it's fast it's not the fastest yep. it's not the fastest it's not maybe as no, fast I as think even the trios, trios three. is faster yeah yeah um the, if you if you export i think this is kind of a big deal john Okay, because it's a color scanner. If you export out of this into some third party like ExoCAD, you can only export STL files. Now, that means you don't mm -hmm. get color exports. Okay, and that can be a little bit of an issue because right. the PLY file, that's getting a little super geeky here, which is what ExoCAD accepts, has a little bit more design capabilities. You can see color and for marking margins, that actually might be an advantage. So, but I think if you're buying Sarek John, you're not buying it just as a scanner. You're buying it because mm -hmm. of what, John? They said one word and you actually kind of yeah. liked what they said. You said, they said family. Family. Yeah, it's a family. It's a family. It's a family. Welcome to yeah, the family. Because we, we asked about, you know, support and service. Yeah. And so like, a guy goes, and you could tell, obviously, corporate. The, the all the hell corporate was there mm. you know he's like it's a family it's a family here at uh here at Sarek. yeah it's a family kind of and a cult and you know what <laughs> i i totally think that's true yeah, as I much too. as i give Sarek people a hard time because it's more of a cult sometimes than a family um i think that i do get it i think that they do no question the very best job of turning your office not this is not a piece of equipment that you buy this is a a not just even a workflow this is like your entire life is changing mm -hmm. truly if you become a Sarek doctor <clears throat> because they're going to come in they're going to train you they're going to train your staff they're going to take you to Raleigh for two days mm -hmm. they're going to come into your office they're going to give you everything you need to be successful yeah he he and, we asked him like what happens if you struggle with this he was like nobody struggles we're i mean we know people struggle but he's like right. we're gonna make it work for you yeah this is gonna work for you and now that's the salesman yeah. we know there's a lot of Sarek sitting in the corner and they're not being used but here we are this is the most modern Sarek. it is a more refined device right. The milling machine we we did find out is probably going to be upgraded. It is set for an upgrade next year. I would expect to right. see that probably because it's the same mill yeah. that they've been using. They don't have any special new mills, so I would expect they're going to come out with prime mill next year. And right. but it doesn't right. mean you shouldn't buy this because of that. Um, they are offering upgrades for Omnicam users that maybe bought Omnicam last year or earlier this year. They're going to give you a, you know, prorated upgrade. Um, you know, if you want to get into yep. this, not including the mill or including the mill and including maybe some a oven, a oven, not for zirconia, uh, you're looking at probably like $160,000, you know? And it is the most expensive. Yep. And we said, okay, so John, let's kind of let's kind of back up here for just a minute. Okay, we talked about two scanners in the beginning. It, of and this. I will, I got to throw one more thing in here. It is, it is wired. Yeah, it's just, wired just and it's a cart. Just before we get out of the features, it is wired. It is a cart. It's a, um, it's big. You know, there's no wireless option. Touch How screen. much does that matter? I, I found that that was interesting. But I know because I know we're going to get into the other side of it. I don't mean to to jump in there was, but I just do think it's interesting. This thing was as heavy and big as it was, even though it's wired, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I get it. Trios, Trios, I get when it's heavy because it's wireless. So you got batteries going on in there. I still don't know that I really understand why prime scan is so huge 
I, I mean, I understand they're going to tell you what the company line is, is they've got all this tech going on in there, but I don't know. Trios managed to do the same darn thing and make it wireless, and it probably weighs the same or less and is less bulky. So I just think, I don't know. I, I, if, I'm, if I'm a Trios user, if I'm a Trios user, I'm looking at the Prime Scan as a scanner, and I'm going, ah, I'm not impressed. Yeah. I'm not impressed. Well, you know, just, I'm I'm thinking look, that they are still behind three shape in terms of the ergonomics mm, and the tech in the scanner, even with their cool software. Uh, anyway, so let's get yeah, back let's to like you back said, up Wes, here if you're gonna like imp- say, if you're gonna implement this in your office, it's 150, 160 thousand yeah. dollars. You're gonna get training that's probably second, second to, to none. none. Yeah, and you're gonna get you're going to be successful. I can say that. I don't know that for sure with Plan Mecca. I feel pretty good about them. But I can say with Sarah, there's no question we have enough users. Because how many Plan Mecca users do we have? We didn't ask that question. Yeah, they're not the largest. How they're, many? They're not. Yeah, I'd love to know the answer to that. I'd love to know if how many rep people are. To ask, listen, just send us a text message. Yeah, let us know. I mean, because we'd love to know how many yeah. people actually are using this. Yeah, and if how you're long using any using. of these scanners, like the newest version with all the stuff, give us right. your experience because we want to give that feedback to the listeners here. You know, I think if we back up here just a little bit and we say mm-hmm. who is innovating and where is the innovation at this point? Mm-hmm. So we feel like that the innovation has really kind of come to just software, right? Yeah. Like, mostly. yeah, everybody's got their newest scanner and maybe it's a little faster. Mm-hmm. One we don't know right now with these newer scanners coming out by the end of this year, how they are doing in cross arch uh, trueness. Right. Mm-hmm. That's going to be hard to really win over the people that are researching this, like Brian Mizimoto. And, um, <clears throat> yep. it's just going to be hard. And John, we're going to bring some people on to talk a little bit about that. And, and some of these fringe things that people are doing. Um, but what we're going to say is that all of this stuff, all of the hardware is kind of evened out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. that everybody is working on software. So who has the best so- design software out there? It's probably Sarek. Who yeah. has the best, you know, um, you know, scanning software actually out there? You know, you know that's 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 it's a close. That's a close. I think one. you could make a case on a couple of these companies. You know, I right. think Sarek's got probably the best artifact rejection, yeah. which that that's very cool. Trios probably um, has the best acquisition software. Right. Right. And it's got the true color still right. that, uh, no one else has. Um, so, probably the, still the, the smoothest. I mean, I, I still didn't, you know, the other thing too, that I, that was interesting was just the, uh, the time after you finish scanning with a couple of these yeah. from the time you finish scanning, actually to the all time you actually had a model it was kind of crazy how long it took. Yeah, you know, I mean, it one took of the things that John and I've got used to with 3M, again, four years old. Right. Is, it takes is, 15 seconds. It takes 15 seconds to check your occlusion to make sure that you have enough reduction on your preps. Right. And like today, right. today I did it, John, and I said, well, we got we to gotta just reduce the prep a little bit more and rescan the lower. Rescan and rescan. The lower. And, you right. know, it didn't take any time. To generate the file on the Prime Scan, the Trios, the Care Stream, mm-hmm. the Plan Mecca to put the two models together in software, it's minutes. Yeah, it's just because there's so much more data, I guess, that it's that I it's looking know. at. I don't know, but it takes a long time. We just want to say it, it takes, takes a, a long, long time. time. I was kind of disappointed in that, but as far as acquisition software, I think your your Trios Three Shape, you know, they're probably up there with the best. Um, mm-hmm. As far as like. Design again, I feel like that probably your Sarek is going to be tops. Plan Mecca had right. some real promise there. The super raw people that want just plain Jane ExoCAD with right with a, a with with good with good trueness with good and trueness accuracy. and accuracy. That's CareStream, you know. Yep. They're just there's not going to be anything fancy there. It's going to be hey, here it is. Yeah, it's going to work. It's going to really work well, really but well. You're going to have to, but if you want to do anything more than scanning, you're right. going to have to learn some stuff. Then if you want to piecemeal this together, you know, and right. you want to have like maybe the one of the best scanners, but then have to go out and like find the rest of the stuff on your own. Well, then that's and you're going to have to provide all your own training. That's going right. to be like, and a tri- that's probably Trios Basic. Trios Basic. 
Yeah. yeah, Trio's three basic, and then you know you source all your own stuff, and you do all your own training, mm-hmm. and I think that could be a very powerful system, but now you're essentially a lab, and you're having to get everything to talk, and when your mill doesn't uh, work, and you call the milling company, they're going to say, well, it's your scanner, and the scanner company's going to say it's your mill, and it's just like a hardware versus software battle from uh, an IT world. So, so John, I'm going to ask you this question. We're going to end the show on this note. I'm going to drive up to your office and I'm going to take your true def and I'm going to throw it up against the wall and break it Oh, where it's not repairable. <laughs> it's a bad day. It's aggression. I'm sick yeah. and tired of this thing. You yeah. know, I hate it. I'm actually just going to push it into the corner and you're not going to be able to turn it on and you're done scanning right. as of tomorrow. First question. One, how quickly do you reincorporate scanning in your office? And number two, when you do it this time, do you buy a mill? Now, you're John, you're a two-doctor practice. I'm a one-doctor right. practice, moving someday, maybe to two. Okay? <laughs> and what what do you do right now? And then I'll tell you what I do. Yeah, so for me, I mean, scanning is an essential part of my day, and I I, I don't I, I don't really want to practice without it. Oh, man, I, could, I hope Tebow's listening. Yeah, I, I could practice without it, but I, I don't want to practice without it. It makes It makes things a lot easier for me for sure. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm never going to be without a scanner <clears throat> in my practice, but, uh, yeah, for me, I, at this point, at this point, I'm not interested in milling, not, not, not that I'm not interested. That's not the right word. I'm just, I just don't think it makes sense for what I do. Um, my practice is not, uh, based on volume or on, um, Lowering the to, bottom to, line, basically, is what you're right, saying. Right, right. I'm, I'm fine. I feel like, you know, the lab gives me the best results, and I'm not having to, to fuss with uh, finicky things that I don't have time for. I would rather be prepping crowns than dealing with lab work. I understand all the arguments, believe me, about milling and good and bad. I think you could be great at doing it. But I, I also think that to do it really, really well you not only have to have extremely highly trained people that you have to rely upon completely to do a great job, but it also takes a lot longer to do it really, really well mm-hmm. than I think what most people, most people spend. I think a lot of people are doing it at a, at a decent level. They're rivaling a $49 crown. Do I think they're they're producing an Emax crown that rivals a nice nice crown from a good lab? No way, man. But for and you, I though, know, you're, you're not going to buy a mail right now. No, I'm but, not interested. But let me in ask milling. you this: right now, your scanner yeah. goes down and it's not repairable and it's done. Right. So, right. What, are, what are you doing right now? Tomorrow, it it is. Yeah. So I would buy a, no question. I'd buy a Trios Three Basic. Okay. No question. And, and I mean, I would look at it and I would go, "All right, for twenty four thousand bucks plus the cost of a laptop, I'd probably buy two laptops." Is how I would set it up for my two doctor practice. I'd buy two laptops and I would. Uh, have the where all I'd have to do is hot swap the actual scanner from operatory to operatory. And yeah, we could move the laptop from op to op as well, but I wouldn't want to just have one for two doctor practice. I really feel like two laptops and one scanner uh, would make really good sense for me. Or I could just do one laptop and scanner if I wanted to cheap it out a little bit more. And so you're going to go wired me, version, right? Yeah, wired. Uh, wireless doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it's cool, but it's not essential. You're used to wireless. And, uh, yeah, and I'm all about, for me, I want the best quality of the scan and ease of use, but I also care a lot about accuracy and trueness, and Trios is up there. But I'll be honest with you, too, I'm also pretty practical. Like, $24,000, I'm not going to probably make a lot of money on that, but I'm also not losing a lot of money. And so I feel like I can do the math with a two-doctor practice, and it's a, I've done it pretty extensively, and it's about 20000 bucks. If your scanner is more than 20000 Considering a life of about five years, hopefully you get five years, you're, you're going to break even. Mm-hmm. Over 20,000. Comparing 000, to re- impression lo- material is what you're saying. In impression material. Mm-hmm. And, and, and impression material. I don't buy anything about remakes and all that crap. Truth is, impressions are great. They're really, really good if you know how to take impressions. But I do think that you, that you do save money in materials. No question. You save a little from the lab. I do care about that, although it's not the most important. If I had to pay five thousand bucks more 
and lose that money over five years, I, I, I would gladly pay an extra thousand bucks a year mm -hmm. to have a scanner in my office. Would I pay an extra $25,000 to have a scanner in my office and an extra $5,000 a year? You know, that's why when I look at Trios 4, I'm like $45,000 to just be able to scan. For me, I don't feel that that makes sense in terms of what you're investing for what you're getting back. I feel like once we get above this $20,000, $25,000 thing for me, I'm looking at milling. Yeah. I agree kind of with the Plan Mecca guy. I'm like, if I'm going to buy a $36,000 scanner, a $45,000 scanner, you better be milling. Man, it starts to really look good to spend $95,000 on a Plan Mecca setup or even to spend $100 and some thousand on a Cerex setup and get into milling. And I know at some point in my, in my career, I'll, I'll be doing that. I just don't know when that's going to be. I don't feel like I'm there yet because there's other parts of my practice. I feel like I'm much more profitable than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think, Wes? I mean, what, what, what would you do if, if it happened to you the same way? And I came up there and I just like ran over <laughs> your true death with my car and I just like destroyed it, man. I mean, what would you do? <laughs> what would, what would happen next? That'd be awesome. Yeah, remember the remember the commercials of the zirconia crowns when they first came out and they were running. Yeah, them over. Glidewell. Yeah, they were running. They're running them over with a truck. Yeah. They're hitting them with a sledgehammer. I love it. It's beautiful. I'll never forget beautiful. it, man. Robbie Anderson comes down from Anderson Dental Lab years ago, and he's like, "Man, let me let me just show you this." And he ran over it with his truck. <laughs> My associate says for the dental guys, we should um, put we should put a a Bruxer crown in a in a piece of wood, and we should put it in a vice. Or shoot he it. wants us to shoot it. Oh, he wants it. us to go down to the shooting range and try to blow it up. Anyway, so fun. what would you do if I if I took your truth up to the shooting range and blew it up? What would you do? Yeah, I, I I'm not interested in milling. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm not in a place where I think it's. I'm ready to put that into my practice. I mean, it doesn't make sense for me right now. I think someday it will. Um, but um, if Something happened to my scanner right now, okay? I probably would just delay for six months, and here's why, okay? Maybe nine months. I would go back to impressioning. It wouldn't be that big a deal for me to just mm. take a break for just a little bit mm -hmm. and let the market kind of get saturated with these new scanners because if, let's say that there is some trueness and precision to some of these new scanners. I, I, I would, I would just want to look at that, you know, and I would want to kind of process that even though I agree that, you know, if I can do full arch, you know, implant restorations with a scanner, is that really a great return on investment versus taking an impression, you know, every other week when we're doing this stuff. Probably not. Makes no sense. But I would just want to know, you know, what's coming. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. if, if for practicality sakes, if I had to have scanning right now, like if it went down and my girls were like, dude, you just gotta, you gotta get us a scanner in here. And they probably would push me to do that. I would do what John's going to do. I did the Trius three basic. I think that it's, it's the most sensible for the office that is already just scanning. It's mm -hmm. it, and when it price came down to twenty three five, I told John, I said, John, that really is our next scanner, you know. Yeah. And without even looking at the rest of these, it's right. it's it makes sense. We already sense. know it's good. It's not. A we already know it's, it's good. good. It's it's proven. It's tested. It it works. Now there are some, right there. Let's say that you're not scanning currently. You definitely need to let the market kind of just settle just a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Go through the summer. Let these other ones come online because I guarantee you there's going to be more deals. I mean, I yeah, just, the prices are, are have got to come down. They're more. going to when, come down. When you can see Treehouse go close. from 40,000 to 24 literally yeah, in just, like a day. Just wait a little bit. That's why I yeah. think that if we just wait just a little bit, I just, I mean, we're talking about six to nine months here, you know, and right. see what happens. Get it done. You know, going into the end of year, you got to spend money anyway sometimes for tax purposes. And this is not, right. we're talking about spending less than $30,000 here, you know? Right. We're not talking about spending one hundred and fifty. dollars okay? Now- I have a feeling I'm going to buy one this year. I, I think I think that- 
I think because, because of I'm looking speed at... and powder free and right. what we deal with right now, as far as like just some things that are just kind of, eh, you know, about the true death. Right. I think you're right, John. It is going to be something at the end of the year that I'm really going to look at. I'm going to, you know, and probably retire from, from true death. It's, you know, what made me, made me do this is when they said they're, they're done because you know, to me, that's a company that's just put a piece of, pro- I mean, it's over in the corner. It's done. Right. They're not innovating on it anymore. And that really is just kind of disappointing to me. So I'm, yeah, I'm interested yeah. in supporting companies that are growing. Now, if I was going to mill today, like if it was ready to go into my practice right now, I first, if I, I would, I would do two things. I would go back to the plan mecca booth and I'd go back to the prime scan booth. I think that the service and support is going to come from, you know, Dent Supply Serona. I think it has to. I think yeah. that we are a little bit biased. I'm going to say that because we know that Sarek Docks, you know, is an amazing facility, you know, mm-hmm. out in Scott, Scottsdale. And we know Samir. And, and that's where I would go to get trained. I would, of course, do the two days in Raleigh. But I would dive in deep. I would have an assistant that was technician and had hands like a dentist right by my side. And I would bring this in to where everybody, let me just tell you right now, everybody that I talk to that sells the mill, the care stream, the CEREC, the plan mecca, you know what they say? They say, Doc, you need to be the one to scan the final prep, walk out of the room, and yeah. walk right back in and seat the restoration and be done. That's yeah. the only way this works. And so you have to relinquish yeah. control. <clears throat> relinquish right. control. So Yeah. Well, I think that that, you know, what what this hopefully has done for you is it's given you a framework to evaluate the market. Now, we're not saying cuz there may be some people that go, "Oh, well there's this, there's this, there's other scanners out there." We know that. We didn't spend a lot of time on Medit because, frankly, they're not widely distributed, and the support is a question that we don't really have an answer to. Yeah. And we have looked at it. Wes has even tried it in his office, so we know about it. There's other there's other scanners. We know this. But these are the major players. These are the ones that you're going to be looking at. So uh, we want to know if this is useful to you. Give us some feedback on that. We want to know what you're using. We want to know if you're happy with what you're using. We want to know if you're not happy with what you're using. We want to know what your plan is for this year. Now, are you going to incorporate your, scanning this year? Right now, the market penetration is about, what, 9 to 11%? Yeah, it's low. It's still less, you know, 1 out of 10. So yeah. is that going to change? You know, there's an interesting thing in uh, uh, Dental Town Magazine. Howard writes his, you know, monthly rant about whatever. And he was talking about how DSO offices are almost all implementing intraoral scanning. And it's because their remake rates are so much lower. Uh, and they well, realized Brad's the dental economics lab said it almost goes to less than less than a half a percent, I think. Yeah. So the economics are making sense. And we don't think that's really because of the scanners we said on the show in, in the episode 69. It's because we think that it makes you have to do more careful things with retraction and you pay. You can see your prep at a higher mag mm-hmm. and all that. But the bottom line is we think that this is something that the market is going to see more and more of. And that's why these companies are jumping on it. <clears throat> so give us your feedback. Let us know what you thought about this. Connect with us on social media. Um, we definitely want to know where you want us to take this information. If this is something you want us to do on a yearly basis, quarterly basis, whatever, we're up for that. We can definitely do that. We feel like the uh, the Dental Guys Buyer's Guide to Scanners could be something that could be you know a regular feature for us. Um, we also want to make sure that you give us a five-star review on Apple podcast. That's huge for us. It, it allows for us to be seen. It allows for our podcast to get the views that it's been getting. It's what's one of the things that's made us so successful and has given us so many views and downloads. We really appreciate all the love out there from our regular listeners and new listeners as well. And pass along information about the dental guys to your friends. When you go to your next CE meeting, uh, if you learn something from us, we want you to let people know where it came from so that we can get uh, more of our information out. We can learn from you guys what you want more of. That is how we grow, and we appreciate all the dedication of our listeners because, man, it's been quite a ride. We continue. Uh, we're marching closer now to episode big 100. That's mm. coming up soon. Wasn't Is it not going to be long? Something special. So, yeah, so give us, uh, give us uh, some love and let us know what you thought, and we look forward to spending time with you next time here. With Wes, I'm John. We are the Dental Guys.